Thanks for joining me. I'm Sammy. I wanted to talk about the astrology of this week and then um, just go into the overall energies of May for what you'll be working on in all signs reading. Quickie, but what you're specifically doing this month uh, for your sign. Keep in mind, these readings won't resonate with everyone. But real quick, I want to go over communication issues right now. Uh, yesterday was a better day for getting things done and and realizing, um, kind of getting clarity on how things need to move forward. But today, the third, things got a little bit harder. Uh, communication is going to feel stiff. Tension is possible. You may get in arguments with a loved one or a boss. Um, and communication is just going to be difficult. It's just not going to match up. And this energy, pretty much the rest of the week, is going to be scattered and may feel more difficult to communicate based on how you feel and if you can meet this person in the middle. There's just a weird energy surrounding most communications. You want to make sure if you do have to have a conversation <laughs> that you do so eloquently make sure what you're saying is truth and really how you feel and that it's not hurtful um, and and also you want to be careful that you're not coming off angry or aggressive and then when they speak really listening really trying to be compassionate and see where they're coming from and see their perspective before we come back with a response because the wires the lines get crossed and then it's a disaster so just be careful until the 8th when Venus moves into Gemini things will get a lot easier Venus in Gemini means um, the love aspect is going to be more so about intellect and mental stimulation so communication will be better since Gemini rules thoughts um, and communication. It's more about the intellect. So you will find yourself more attracted to people based on their intellect and or your communication will increase and you will find it attractive when the person you're with or your family member or whatever, you will find that the communication becomes much easier and open and flows a lot better. Right after that, Mercury is going to join Venus there in Gemini and stay there direct. So that's really going to help with finding clarity, finding uh, ideas just flowing easier. Your thoughts, you may be overthinking a little bit, but it's going to be like in a positive way. You may be looking into other topics researching more, wanting to study new things. The intellect is really going to be highlighted uh, until the end of May, May 29th, Mercury will be retrograding. And we all love Mercury retrogrades. As well as Saturn will be retrograding. And we have a total full moon lunar eclipse on the 26th. Uh, so that's going to be fun. And um, so all of this energy right now, this week, what I really want to talk about and what you can look forward to into the next week is this communication weird feeling right now. It's like you're just supposed to sit in this, okay? And it's hard and it sucks and it's like you're stuck in this mucky... It doesn't feel good. But it's meant to kind of, I think, force you to feel these things. And in doing so, we can kind of dig deep and find out why we feel like this, where it's coming from, can we fix it, is there healing uh, still being asked to be done from the last, the Scorpio full moon. I, there's got to be a reason, you know, for Source and the astrology to be implementing this right now. So this is like really take the time to understand how you feel. You shouldn't try to talk about it. 
don't try to talk about it yet because chances are you're confused, the other person's confused, and you don't know how to come together yet. Or, and or, you just don't know what to do about it or how to, how to do anything about it. So just wait. My advice would be just wait at least until the 8th, maybe even the 9th. When Venus is here, communication is easier, your thoughts become clearer, you should probably come out of this state of confusion as Mercury moves into Gemini as well. Then, Jupiter jumps into Pisces. Okay, so check where Pisces is in your chart. Jupiter can bring blessings, expansion, opportunity. Okay, so we're going to be using the intellect, using Venus, using all this... A really positive energy flow into this Jupiter aspect so witnessing uh, like realizing the blessings and opportunities as they come even if they don't look quite like you imagined but still look closely at the opportunities okay don't take them all maybe but be willing to be open-minded about these opportunities also Jupiter can bring uh, Jupiter is just a very big, a large, you know, the largest body in the solar system. So Jupiter's energy is very much so expansive, but like larger than life kind of fun, but can be overindulgent. So watch what you're eating, you know, just don't do everything in excess. You know, you can have fun, not too much fun. You can eat, don't eat too much, that sort of thing. Uh, don't be making huge bets on things either. You know, like gambling, that can be dangerous. So, then after Jupiter, uh, well, Jupiter will be here until July, but still, after that aspect hits, then we come into a new moon in Taurus, a dark moon. So, it's going to be more relaxing, I think. To give us a chance to breathe after this weird, mucky, can't connect kind of feeling that we're in right now, we'll move into this opportunity stage where things flow more freely and then more opportunity and blessings and, and it's like picking and choosing which of those will really help you on your future timeline as far as your dreams and what it is that you want goes and then the new moon will just kind of be more calm and relaxing it may be about exploring more of the hidden aspects of what you really want physically tangibly what is actually possible in the real world versus what you think you want okay how to implement that but it's not going to be as heavy until see then when we move towards the end of the month it gets heavier so saturn goes retrograde then we have total lunar eclipse full moon um and then in, in sagittarius and then it will be the mercury mercury retrograde so even though it goes retrograde on the 29th we'll be feeling the effects of the mercury retrograde um starting Next week, this the end of this week, okay, the pre-shadow is about three weeks long. And a lot of times the pre-shadow is worse than the actual retrograde. So just keep that in mind. Uh, especially, it's going to be issues with communication. That's always a thing with Mercury retrograde. Travel and electronic type things, technology can have an issue where like your phone doesn't work, your computer is going down constantly, your internet's not working, um, you know, or you, you're constantly like missing somebody's call, goes back and forth, and communication is off, and you take things the wrong way. So just be cautious. That heavier energy is coming in at the end of the month, like I mentioned. So right now, watch this communication thing. Towards the 8th and the 9th, things will get better and flow more freely. Jupiter and then the new moon in Taurus, where we can kind of get a chance to relax before the heavier energy comes in later in the month. Okay, so let's do all signs very quickly, just like two cards to see what we're doing, what our focus is for the month of May. 
Spirit, please bless this reading. We ask for protection, clarity, clear interpretations, and truth. Okay, I'm just going to use these as the collective because that's what I was going to do first. So we have uh, Ace of Cups. Can you see? The light is weird. Ace of Cups and Two of Pentacles. So this is really a, a focus on love, possibly new love. This is for the collective, remember. So focus on something new, something emotionally fulfilling. This could be a baby. This could be romance. This could be a new idea that's emotionally fulfilling, that's following your passion, but it's something brand new. Also, with this energy, we have Two of Pentacles. So it's finding where that is. What does that look like? Two of Pentacles is trying to figure out more of the real world aspects, the financial aspects, the material world. What does it look like finding these passions, embracing a new beginning in love, possibly, but it's like the planning stages. Or is what I want possible in the material world? Is this new love or passion um, or baby, whatever it is, this it's a very emotional, it's loving, it makes you feel good, okay? It's brand new. So, it could be a new stage in love, it could be new love, period. It could be a new aspect or phase of love, as in adding a child or a family member or getting married. Or, this could be following a passion, a new hobby. Um, adding a new stream of income based on your passions, like a side job type thing. And it's very much so with this energy of balance, it can this work? Will this benefit us? Um, do we have what it takes materially and intangibly in the real world financially to make this happen? Is this going to benefit? It's just like, can I do this? What's the best way to do this? Month of May. Okay, so this is like exploring the dreams that you have, the love inside you, the passion inside you, Exploring how to make that real in the real world. Weighing the pros and cons. You know, figuring out how to do this materially, financially. Thank you, Spirit. That was the collective. So we're going to jump to Capricorn. Let's see. What is Capricorn's focus for the month of May? High Priestess, okay, tell me about, thank you, everyone's like in this confused period right now, indecision, so we have High Priestess and the Two of Swords, this could be wanting to choose the higher path, wanting to take the high road, wanting to um, listen more closely to your intuition, you could be getting guidance this month and, and you're kind of waiting on it, I'm like, do I really want to? Listen to my intuitions, like, I feel like this is the right thing, but perhaps what's in front of me looks completely different. And so you could be going back and forth about this. But the High Priestess is definitely about the subconscious. How do you feel about things? What are you manifesting within that you may not be aware of? This is negative self-talk. Um, negative outward talk uh, to everyone. <laughs> so just be mindful this month. There is a higher guidance coming through for you. This is about moving towards a higher stage, listening to your intuition, uh, listening to your guidance, not being afraid to make big decisions. If you feel stuck or confused or in indecision, definitely pray about it. Go to your guides, ask for guidance, ask for clear messages. And what I always do is ask for the signs and symbols that you, that you will be aware of, that you will recognize. You know, because you could get signs all day, but if it doesn't trigger you as a sign, your spirit guides are like, we gave you 50 million signs, and you're like, mm, I didn't see any of them. So ask for the signs that you will see, ones that you will recognize, and then just kind of be ready and open to witness those things, and witness the synchronicity and piece them together. Okay, follow numerology this month. If you're confused about anything, go. you have to go and pray about it and ask for clarity. I feel like you are connecting to your higher guidance and what it is that you want to manifest, but it seems like you could be in a stage of, of confusion about exactly uh, like what that looks like 
and this is the energy we're all in collectively, just trying to figure out how to manifest materially right now as we move through this higher energy on the planet. So it's like, how do we make our dreams real? So Capricorn, listen to your higher guidance this month. Uh, two of swords can also be like, there's two different paths. I don't know which way to take. And so you're definitely going to need to listen to your higher guidance and your intuition on that. So watch for signs and symbols. Pray, meditate, whatever it is that you do that helps to give you clarity. Water fasting is something I'll always encourage when you need clarity. Water or any kind of liquid fast really helps. Okay, Spirit, thank you. Tell me about Aquarius for the month of May. What is Aquarius' focus for the month of May? Emperor energy. This is a masculine energy, Aries. The emperor likes to get stuff done. Tell me about this emperor. Very firm, diligent, disciplined, um, creating strategy. What is this pertaining to, Spirit, for the month of May for Aquarius? Thank you. Okay, Ace of Swords. So this may be you becoming more firm on your boundaries. Um, a truth may come out or communication needs to be had. This could also be you getting really serious, noticing what needs to be cut out of your life and doing that. But the Emperor is a fierce energy, masculine, doesn't play around. This is what I want. I'm going for it. Aries energy. So that's the initiator. Um, being the first one to do something or you have an idea and you're just going to go for it. Ace of Swords can be inspiration, a new idea, but it's also communication. So it could be truth coming out, you need to tell somebody the truth, um, or you find out a truth this month that changes everything. Okay, but you're in an energy of fighting for what you want, going for what you want, very disciplined, and clear communication this month. Okay, so that is going to be your focus. Um, and also following any inspiration that you get. This will lead to really good brand new ideas, okay? Sparks of, of knowledge, some sort of truth. Ace of Swords can represent a new beginning as well. So just being sure that you're a clear communicator this month seems like you're just going to be doing that naturally. But you don't want to be too harsh. Both of these energies are a little bit harsh. Um, you know know what to do Aquarius definitely going for what you want this month so that's awesome cut out what needs to be cut out you know whatever stocks it for you and move on thank you tell me about Pisces spirit Pisces for the month of May what is Pisces focus for this month of May Pisces there they are together. Okay, we've got the Hermit, Virgo energy, isolating yourself, going within. Probably don't want to hang out with too many friends, you know. Searching for some sort of clarity, higher knowledge, higher wisdom, or just if you're in a state of confusion or um, in that kind of like stuck in a rut, this is the time to go within and really search for what you're supposed to be doing right now for your higher purpose and your mission. And we have the moon. So it's like searching for something that's hidden and or going within to heal and deal with this kind of emotional turmoil. The moon is what is hidden. It can also represent the subconscious dreams. Um, so watch your dreams this month. While you're resting, or while you're in this stage of seeking higher knowledge, going within, searching within, isolating yourself from the outside world, really be focused on your emotional state and what's coming up for you, what's asking to be healed. And this is all really based on how you feel. You could be going within because uh, emotional turmoil has occurred in your relationship or in your career and it's causing you to go within and saying like I don't like this doesn't feel good and I gotta figure out why so you focusing on you is going to help you heal emotionally this month the best thing for you to do Pisces this month is to focus on you focus on the self 
what your path is and what your purpose is. Everything else will fall in line if you focus on you. Okay, the Hermit is Virgo energy, so definitely using your, your heart, pure, being pure of heart and really just searching for the highest truth and what's going to benefit you the most for this month. And um, you could be seeking hidden truths, looking further into the occult this month. Thank you, Spirit. Please tell me about Aries for the month of May. Ooh, Aries. I like it. I like it. Nine of Pentacles, Nine of Cups. This is you. Uh, it could be single energy, but it's just very independent, self-sufficient, hot stuff, luxury, abundance, creating it for yourself, and you're going for this Nine of Cups, which is your wish fulfillment. You could be making a wish, you could be praying for something, you could be manifesting this thing, but this is like, you're definitely focused on yourself, working on yourself, becoming more self-sufficient, and working towards this Nine of Cups, which is having... Uh, this dream come true type of lifestyle. You may feel more materially drawn as we're in this this month still um, and through the new moon energy with Taurus here. Focus on your money. Focus on making your dreams come true this month. And if you got to be single to do it, that could be what this energy is saying. But um, you may just find yourself like Pisces isolating and focusing on you. It's going to bring you your dream come true. Thank you, Spirit. Building. Building something new. Uh, it could be a business. It could be a partnership. It could be a house. That could be your dream. It could be wanting to build your house. Thank you, Spirit. Enough of Aries. <laughs> Let's go to Taurus, please. Tell me about Taurus for the month of May. What is the focus of Taurus for the month of May, please? Oh, two just dropped out of the bottom, just like that. I'm going to take them. Four of Pentacles. Ten of Swords. Yeah, something doesn't feel good, something's uncomfortable, or you're worried about your own self, your own stability, and your own security. Something doesn't feel good, and so it looks like it's going to end. Could have been painful, could have been some suffering here, but we're coming towards the end of it right now. Uh, someone may have stabbed you in the back, or you may, you may feel like someone is. There's some sort of mistrust here because you're worried about yourself, protecting yourself, protecting your money, making sure you have what you need, your stability, and your security. Uh, it could be emotional, but it seems like it's financial. So if someone's affecting your money, or you feel like someone's going to steal from you, or you feel like um, someone went behind your back and did something, I don't know what this is. It's possible it's a relationship where you don't feel secure, and so it's ending. Uh, you know what this is, Taurus. It's not going to resonate for everybody. So this is like you're in this stage of just protecting yourself and focused on your money and going after what it is that you want. So if something has to end, then it has to end. It seems like there has been an ending or there will be an ending this month where something is over and you're done with it. But this isn't going to be a surprise, okay? This is like you've been hurt multiple times, you've gone through this multiple times, and now you're finally ready to let it go because this is the end. Ten is completion, and that you won't have to deal with it anymore. Okay? Thank you, Taurus. Let's move to... Gemini. They love to come work outside whenever I'm doing a reading. All the landscape artists. Thank you. Tell me about Gemini for the month of May. Gemini for the month of May, please. What is Gemini's focus? For the month of May. Something wanted to jump out. Okay. Five of Cups. Focused on negativity. Uh, focused on what was. What could have been. Crying over spilled milk. This could be sort of like the victim card. 
Could be regret, could be remorse, king of cups on the bottom, could be walking away from a, a water sign. We have the empress, so you're moving towards a more positive um, energy for yourself and an atmosphere. The empress can create anything she wants. She's highly abundant, extremely fertile. You can have whatever you want. You can create whatever you want. The empress does it in the material. So in, in the tarot goes high priestess, which is number two. Then it jumps to the Empress, number three. So it goes, High Priest is subconsciously creating, and the Empress makes it real. Real life in the physical, manifesting, creating abundance for yourself. So you have a very fertile energy moving towards the end of the month. Right now, it seems like you're kind of regretful. You're in this energy of not, you're not, not being happy. You don't like what you got. You want something better. So what happens is you transition from this sappy, mopey, negative, meh, which is what we're in right now. Let me tell you, this collective, I'm feeling this. You're going to move into something better. Watch when Venus and Mercury move into Gemini. Into your sign, you're going to have ideas like that. Be super attractive. You're going to be flowing. This fertility is going to come to fruition for whatever you want to create. So be thinking about that now and moving towards that now. Even if you feel stuck and Saturn's got you trapped, like you can't move right now. You can't do it. Okay, Jupiter moves into Pisces. Everything else moves into your sign, Mercury and Venus. And things will become easier for you. Okay? There is this King of Cups on the bottom, so uh, take that or leave that aspect. It could be a water sign that you're dealing with or trying to walk away from or um, just something that has hurt you regarding King of Cups. But it's not going to matter because towards the end of this month or especially the middle of the month, you're going to be so hot, like <laughs> you're so attractive. You can literally have anyone and anything that you want. So you're going to be getting over that King of Cups real quick. Thank you. Let's move to Cancer. Whoa, whoa. That was quick. And you got three. So we have this chaotic energy. This kind of fighting or conflict energy. Which I can tell you, yes. Right now, yes. Uh, don't fight with anybody. <laughs> Try not to be in conflict with people. Um, you know, Mars is in Cancer. So people are fighting for their emotional state. People are fighting to feel better. People are fighting for... Yuck stuff. You know, if something is upsetting to them, they're going to be fighting for it. So, let's try to let that go. Become this queen of pinnacles. This is you. Focus on your money. Focus on being the nurturer, the mother. Um, taking care of those around you and feeling very secure within yourself. And we got Wheel of Fortune. When you do that, when you let go of this fighting and arguing, whatever this conflict is, and you become this queen of pinnacles, you focus on your money, you get this. Wheel of Fortune. That's amazing. You could come into... Um, some inheritances. Jupiter may be blessing you with inheritance, lottery winnings, random uh, returns on investments, stocks, that kind of thing. But your money definitely improves this month. Um, once you go within, focus on yourself, taking care of your own needs and, and those around you, the things on, on the daily that you have to do for others, Cancer. And that's you. You're that energy of the mother, right? Very nurturing, taking care of everybody. Let go of this conflict. And focus on you and your money, and this Wheel of Fortune comes through for you. That's the end. Wheel of Fortune is a 10. That's the end of a negative cycle once you make this change within yourself. Okay? Um, and that may be hard for you, but this is you naturally. Naturally, you want to nurture. Naturally, you want to take care of others. So you take care of you and your money and, you know, the people around you, the things that you do every day. Let go of this conflict with people. And you have to let go of it within. You have to forgive it within. Then this lesson is learned. Wheel of Fortune starts turning in your favor. And money looks really good for you this month. Thank you, Cancer. Spirit. Tell me about Leo for the month of May. Leo. Let us see. Okay. Queen of Cups. Focus on your emotional well-being. Could have a Queen of Cups, which would be Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, female. If not, this could just be your energy, which is just having compassion for others. Focus on your emotional fulfillment and well-being, um, healing, forgiving others. Then we have Five of Swords. So Five of Swords may feel like you don't really know how to come together with this person. You may feel like they took advantage of you or, or you took advantage of them. This card can make you feel defeated. Um, 
it goes both ways. Somebody, somebody in this place can feel very defeated, defeated emotionally. Okay, whether it's you or the person that you're dealing with this month, but overall, it's like you're searching for this emotional happiness. You want peace uh, and compassion and and joy, and you just want it to flow freely. It's a very watery sign. Um, so you could also have Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancer in your chart. But this Five of Swords is like, sometimes you feel like somebody got the best of you. Um, sometimes you can feel like you don't have enough um, to give somebody. And this can go into that emotional defeat as well. Like you don't have enough to give. You may be close to giving up on something because it doesn't feel good. Um, but you want it to feel good. This is just a, this whole month it seems right now at least while this energy is here, people are really confused. And they're having a hard time connecting. So you can feel defeated or the person you're with can feel defeated. But at the same time on this card, it's like someone feels victorious but it's in a negative way. So it's possible that um, someone got one over on you or somebody like at your job um, took advantage of you or um, it's just a card of like imbalance. So you could be thinking too much as well, too much in, in your headspace. It's just like communications with others doesn't seem to be going your way. Five of Swords. Sometimes it's just like a user type energy. You may you just may feel really emotionally drained this month, but it's like you you you're coming from a good place, but maybe it's every time you try to help someone, every time you try to talk to someone, maybe somebody takes it the wrong way. Because communication is hard. You are working on yourself though. Eight of Pentacles is about self-development. It's like going within, figuring out you, figuring out what you need, making yourself the best version possible. Okay, that's enough for Leo. Thank you, Spirit. Tell me about Virgo for the month of May. What is Virgo's focus for the month of May? Virgo! For the month, thank you. Whoa, resting. I just saw another one. Was it you? No. No. Anyways. Well, let's see what else comes out. Resting, vacation, taking a break, meditating. Yeah, you're always worried about your paper, aren't you, Virgo? Feeling insecure, um, covering your own securities, covering your own ass, trying to protect yourself and have stability. Four of Pentacles is always kind of an energy of control. And this is like really reminds me of you, Virgo, honestly. Um, there are times when you just think too much. You're in your head too much and you need to relax. You need to let it go. You need to pray and surrender and give it to God because you get too obsessed with either your money, your finances, any sense of security, whether it's financial or emotional in relationships. They're the same to me for you, Virgo, uh, with how I think of you. And that's just that if something doesn't go how you planned, that's scary. That's uncomfortable. I don't like that. I don't like to feel unstable. I don't like to feel, I'm speaking as you right now. I don't like to feel like um, you're not giving as much as I am and I'm giving more to the situation. See, that freaks me out because now I'm uncomfortable and now I don't feel stable and secure and safe. So your safety is very important as far as security financially and emotionally. And you're focused on that this month for some reason. You could be um, saving your money, budgeting better, um, or you could just be taking a break, relaxing, taking a break from uh, spending, taking a break from worrying about your money. You may be trying to relax more about your money. Or you're, you're relaxing and taking a break from possibly a relationship where you feel you were trying to make something happen for yourself or feeling... It's like trying to take control of something. Trying to make it happen just exactly how you want it. So you, you may be taking a break from that energy where you're going to let it go this month and really relax. And what you need to do is renew. 
Virgo. You need to relax and renew and take a vacation and pray and try to let go of these issues where, where you're feeling insecure and so you're, you know, sometimes you tighten up on people or situation and try to make things go your way and that actually ends up building resistance and it makes things go the opposite of the way that you want. Okay, Virgo, you'll get there. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go to Libra. Tell me about Libra for the month of May. What is Libra's focus this month? What is Libra's focus this month of May? Two, just for you. Page of Cups and Knight of Pentacles. So, yeah. Uh, this is good. You could be falling in love. You could be wanting to uh, meet someone new. You could be confessing your love. You could be apologizing. This is just like more communication, more loving communication to where you feel better. This is also a newer stage of love. So this could be um, early stages of infatuation or liking someone or just moving the relationship you have to a more fun, emotionally fulfilling, playful space where the communication is clear and everyone is able to say how they feel and the emotion feels really good. Whatever this is though, it seems like you're moving slowly towards this thing, but it is a long-term thing. It's just gonna take a while to get there. So you could be focused on your money, um, for those of you who this could be money, um, you could be starting to think about a new idea, a new emotionally fulfilling type hobby thing that we were talking about um, for the collective. And you know it's more long-term balance for you and secure for you in the long run. And so it's like just the beginning stages of figuring out how to go about doing that. If that's for a career for you, like starting a brand new business. Um, doing the things that really excite you and light you up and bring you happiness and joy. The things that you love. Okay, and whatever it is, it's going to take work, discipline, and it's going to have to be steady. Non-stop, very consistent, and it's going to take a while. Okay, but this is long term. It does look like a really great opportunity for you, whatever this is. So for some of you, I feel like it is emotional. So for some of you, this is just taking your relationship to the next level or finding new love. Um, thinking about someone, thinking about new love, and then taking action on it. Slowly, steadily, but you feel like this could be something that lasts long term. So that's exciting. Take it how it resonates, whether it's career or um, personal love life. But for you, Libra, it almost always feels like personal love life. And we got the High Priestess. So think about what you're creating subconsciously for yourself when it comes to love, when it comes to career, whatever this um, loving communication that needs to take place. Um, you may actually be going to tell someone that you want to commit to them, you want to move forward with them, um, but you want to go slow. If it's love. Okay, thank you. Um, but with High Priestess, you need to listen to your intuition on that. And the higher font. Yeah, that's definitely about commitment for some of you. Okay, marriage, long-term relationships. Yeah. Thank you. Spirit was confirming that for Libra. It's like, this is moving to the next stage of commitment. But it's like, <laughs> you want to tell someone, but you don't, it's like you want to tell them you want to go slow. But it's very loving and clear, and it's cute and sweet. Okay, thank you. Let's go to Scorpio. Scorpio, please. What is Scorpio's focus? The death card. That's you. I called you out, and you jumped out. Death card, transformation. Tell me about this for Scorpio for the month of May. What is Scorpio's focus regarding this death card? Transformation and transition. Yeah, we have the chariot. Something's ending and you're moving in a completely different direction. But the good news with the chariot is um, it's like getting back on track, getting back towards your life purpose, your path, the place where you're supposed to be, and you're in full control. Chariot is like you're taking the reins back. You're taking control over your life and you're headed in the direction that you want to go. You feel more confident and it's heading towards something really good. The chariot actually also moves pretty quickly. So it seems like you've let something end here. Um, something has ended and there's a new beginning and you know where you're headed now. 
The death card can also just mean transition or transformation within yourself. We did go through that Scorpio full moon in your sign, and then we had Pluto retrograde, which is still here until October. So Pluto retrograde tears things down and wants to start brand new, wants you to look closer at things and um, brings death. So it could just be endings. It doesn't have to be negative endings, but it could just be done with something, done with uh, an addiction, done with certain hobbies that you want to start something new or new projects or relationships or a career it could be literally anything um there's a hangman on the bottom there's piscean energy here the chariot is cancer the thing is you know which way you need to go okay but it seems like you're taking a minute to pause and reflect as if you don't know which way to go Pluto retrograde might have something to do with that. Also, we're moving into the Mercury retrograde and Saturn retrograde by the end of this month. So, don't take too much time to pause and reflect. Scorpio, you're very psychic. You know which way you need to go. The chariot has already said that. So, I feel like you're thinking too hard and too long on something. It may be that you've, you're like paused, feeling like you don't know which way to go. But Spirit is saying you do know. You've already been told or you've gotten a hit on your intuition or a dream or something. So... You know which way you need to go. Don't stop and think. Don't go back and forth. It's over. It's done. It's ended. Death card. So don't go back and forth and try to figure that out. Please. Thank you. Tell me about Sagittarius. For the month of May, the Fool, starting something brand new. Aries energy. I love it. Brand new beginning. Very optimistic. That's you, right, Sag? Adventurous. No fear excited for where it's going and strength cards so two major arcana which shows that you're going through major transformation this month but you're excited about where you're going okay other things start flowing positively for you or you're just feeling very optimistic and you're in this strength card you have the strength you have the courage and you have faith most importantly is your faith in the universe your faith in god your faith in your connection to yourself your higher self uh, and your own soul and your own path you're moving towards this great new thing. This could be love, this could be career, this could just be moving further into your connection, deeper connection with source, creator, uh, God, so that you feel more comfortable. You're really trusting. You're focusing on trusting right now, trusting the universe, and you're like excited about where it's gonna take you. This is a really great energy to be in this month, Sagittarius. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.